Greg Ehrenberg from Odd Chopper here to break down the Sunday main slate of action for football, talking over some of my favorite prop bets. As you guys come in, do me a big favor, like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Only takes you a couple of seconds and it really does help us grow this channel a whole bunch. Also, if you want any more access to myself and all the other guys on the YouTube channel, we've got our betting Discord channel to get one week free access to by clicking on the link below. And there's stuff that I can provide in terms of value there that I can't really do in the same way on YouTube. So for instance, my favorite NFL bet of the weekend, it was over the points in the Bills-Browns game. Now, the reason being is we had this situation where the game was being moved from, well, originally the total dropped a whole bunch because of the terrible weather conditions in Buffalo calling for six feet of snow. But then we got word the game was going to be moved into a dome in Detroit. So immediately I went and bet the over in that game knowing it was about to go up because of the change in venue. And then something else also about this situation is that I know the different rules, the different terms and agreements and the different sports book rules across different books. So I knew for DraftKings, the bets still stand if there's a venue change. Some other books bet MGM, FanDuel, they will cancel the bets if there is a change in venue. So I knew I wanted to bet the over on DraftKings because I was going to get good value on a bet that was going to stand. So I bet over 43 and a half points in that game. The total is now close to 50. So it's very hard to bet NFL totals. We're going to get up to seven points of line value in any kind of total. But that's a situation that we're able to get by acting quickly on that change in venue. So that's the kind of stuff I could prov pr provide as value in Discord. If that is of interest to you, click on the link below to sign up because it's totally free for the first week and you can see what it is we do in there and no risk to yourself just get your foot in the door and check us out but let's talk about sunday main slate of football these are my favorite prop bets of the week getting into my prop bets for sunday though quick also recap of i'm recording this shortly after the thursday night football game which was a pretty tilting one for me i had three bets on the game and i thought i was going to go three and zero on those bets felt really good about them i had aaron Rodgers under passing yards that one did end up winning fairly easily and then I had two bets that lost in garbage time. Christian Watson plus money bet on under three and a half receptions. And then Alan Lazard under four and a half receptions. And it was a spot where all three of them looked like they were going to hit. The Titans just needed to get a first down and the game would have been over. But instead, they weren't able to convert. They kicked the ball back to or punted the ball back to Green Bay. And then Watson and Lazard each caught a pair of catches in garbage time towards the tail end of the game to hit the over on their set on their receptions prop. So went one and two for the game. I did also, in terms of my prop bets, I did also have a bet on the Titans to win the game. So that was nice. But either way, I felt like I had good bets that should have had better results. And then sometimes it just doesn't go your way. But just wanted to make sure that I pointed out some of my results from the most recent video I did. And now getting into my bets for Sunday, starting with Marcus Mariota, over 163 and a half passing yards. Mariota's been terrible this year. And I have actually bet the over on his passing yardage with some success this year because the totals are so low. So Mariota is over under for passing yards, 163 and a half this weekend. We have him up against the Chicago Bears projected for 209.8 passing yards. So still a fairly low mark, but the number is so low on Mariota's passing yards total. We've had some games where we bet the over on him where he's been terrible and we still hit the overs because it's 150 or 140 yards as his passing yardage prop. That's what happened last week against the Panthers. I bet the over on his passing yardage. It ended up winning. He only had 186 yards, but when the totals are so low, it just makes it easier for some of these numbers to win. And that's what we've seen in some of these spots, like against the Saints earlier in the year, the Rams, the Seahawks, uh, a game against the Panthers, uh, both games against the Panthers actually hit the over on his passing yardage mark. And we see some of these totals being so low. I think it takes, it, it makes sense to take advantage of a low mark where it just doesn't take all that much for him to ultimately hit the over on it. And then something else that should help also is that Justin Fields has been so good as of late for the Bears. They're putting points up on the board, and that means the teams actually have to score to keep up with them. So Marcus Mariota going up against the Bears. Passing prop, I think is a little bit too low. Give me over 163 and a half yards while we have them projected for just a little bit over 200. The next bet I'm looking at is under 85 and a half rushing yards for Jonathan Taylor, who's had a very disappointing season particularly if you guys are playing him and drafted him in fantasy leagues where he was the consensus number one overall pick and has been one of the biggest busts of the year. Some of it's been health related. Some of it's been performance related. The Colts offensive line has been no good. The offense has been no good as a whole. But Jonathan Taylor, I do think of as a very talented running back. But here's the issue. The matchup against the Eagles is one that I don't think the game script looks all that great. The Eagles are seven point favorites. That doesn't set up all that well for Jonathan Taylor to be running the ball in the later stages of the game. Now I know that a narrative that's very true about the Eagles, their run defense hasn't been great this year. They are actually 
28th overall in rush defense DVOA, so towards the bottom of the league. But they made a couple of big signings this this week that I think should shore up the run defense. They added both Linval Joseph and Indomitian Sue, who are veteran players that have been known as great run stoppers throughout their career. I think this should be a huge boost to the Philadelphia Eagles' run defense. So these are the things I think is working against Jonathan Taylor. Number one, I think we're going to see an improvement in the, Eagles, in, the, in the Eagles' run defense going forward. And then also, the game script doesn't set up all that well for Jonathan Taylor to be getting many carries in the later stages of the game. Now, I think Jonathan Taylor is going to be on the field. I think he's going to get touches. But I think more of that's going to come through the passing game than through the run game just because I expect the Eagles to be up late in this game. And now some of our projections on Odd Chopper also back that up. We have the under projected to win 65% of the time on this mark. So my next bet, I'm going with under 85 and a half rushing yards for Jonathan Taylor. You guys want to know a really easy way to make 200 bucks this weekend? Sign up at DraftKings Sportsbook. If you don't have an account there yet, they pay out $200 on your first $5 money line bet when the team wins. So this is what I think is a really good way to take advantage of this. Go head on over to DK Sportsbook and find the biggest money line favor you could find, at least as of while I'm recording this right now. It is the Duke Blue Devils. They are a massive basketball favorite at minus 3,500. So find a spot like that. You bet $5, and as long as this team wins, and some of these big money line favorites, they're basically a lock to win. It pays out 200 bucks. So you're getting a team like Duke, for instance, at minus 3,500, and you're getting those odds boosted up to the equivalent of 40 to 1. So sign up at DK Sportsbook, click on the link below, place a $5 bet, and you're going to make $200. The next bet I'm looking at, it's a narrative I'm buying into. So I'm going with Jalen Warren over 24 and a half rushing yards. Now I've been hearing for a couple of weeks now that the Steelers could be giving Jalen Warren either the starting running back job over Najee Harris or at the very least starting to work him in more and more going forward. And I think it's warranted. Najee Harris has been absolutely terrible this year. Now I know the Steelers are one of the worst offensive lines in football. And it's very possible that this isn't Najee Harris's fault at all. Maybe Jalen, maybe Jalen Warren will struggle just as much. But at least to this point, Najee Harris is averaging 3.6 yards per carry this year, whereas Jalen Warren, behind that exact same offensive line, is averaging 5 yards per carry. So you can't be worse than what Najee Harris is doing. Why not give Jalen Warren more of an opportunity? And it looks like we started to see that last week. Jalen Warren had 9 rushes. That was a season high for him the week before he had six, which was also at that time a season high. So we've seen a guy in Jalen Warren who was getting two, three, sometimes four carries per game to six carries two weeks ago and then nine carries last week. And overall, he had 12 carries for 87 yards across those two games. That is significantly better production than what the Steelers have gotten out of Najee Harris. So I think we're going to continue to see Jalen Warren's workload increase. And on the chance that happens, 24 and a half is such a low rushing yardage prop. We've been projected for 33 and a half over at Odd Chopper, and that's assuming a little bit of an increase, but not a crazy increase in Jalen Warren's overall workload. If we see Jalen Warren get up to 10 touches, or even if he just gets the nine from last week, he only has to average three yards per carry, and he's easily clearing the 24 and a half prop mark. So I think this makes a whole lot of sense. I buy into Warren's workload starting to see more as we go forward and get more into the season. Because at this point, why not see who you have in Jalen Warren, especially when the Steelers season isn't going anywhere. So Jalen Warren, give me over 24 and a half rushing yards. One of the best situations to pick on this year, it's been the Detroit Lions pass defense. They gave up tons of passing yardage. If you guys play DFS, quarterbacks, wide receivers against the Lions, they've destroyed all year. The Lions defense is overall 26th in defensive DVOA. They're 24th in pass defense DVOA, 27th in rush defense DVOA. And Daniel Jones, who's been much better for the Giants this year. He's cleaned up the turnovers. He's been a little bit more of a game manager as opposed to a, a, a big playmaker for the Giants. But he's been consistent. He's been steady. I love the matchup against the Detroit Lions. And his overrunner for passing yards is 194.5. A really low number for such a good matchup against the Detroit Lions. Daniel Jones, we have him projected for 221 passing yards this weekend. So the over winning 66% of the time, good for an 18% expected ROI. But more than anything here, I just want to attack the Detroit Lions defense. Any way I could get betting exposure to them, I think it makes sense going up against the Lions. So Daniel Jones with a really low passing yardage prop, give me over 194 and a half yards. So recapping our prop bets for this weekend, there's some really low numbers in here. I've got Marcus Mariota over 163 and a half passing yards, Jonathan Taylor under 85 and a half rushing yards, Jalen Warren over 24 and a half rushing yards, and finally Daniel Jones over 194 and a half. So three props that were really taking advantage of some low prop numbers that shouldn't take too much for them to hit the overs. 
What do you guys think of these bets? Let me know below in the comment section. But also, before you leave, if you haven't done yet, like the video, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Good luck and enjoy the game.